Today, we're talking about small business tax deductions and how to maximize your savings. And so one thing I want to talk about, this is one of my favorite topics to talk about with business owners and something that so many business owners have questions on. And I just want to say that when we're talking about tax deductions, if it's related to your business, if it's helping your business, it's a business expense. And so typically a lot of business owners will say, well, Mike, I'm, I'm running this advertising campaign and I'm paying for ad space and I'm paying for a newspaper campaign and I'm putting an article in newspapers. Is that a tax deduction? Absolutely. And so a lot of times I think that we, that a lot of the things we talk about on the podcast, we start to get into these areas that are maybe not as obvious. So hiring our kids and the strategy around that and how to fully take advantage of travel and meals and all those different things. And we talk about some of these tax strategies and tax saving opportunities that are not always super obvious when small business owners are coming to them. And that's that's our goal with our podcast is to come and bring these ideas and these thoughts to you that that maybe you're not thinking about. But I don't want to brush over this fact of always still those obvious ones, those things that are obvious business expenses. We need to make sure we're taking advantage of those, too. So you pay for an advertising campaign. That's a business deduction. You take a team member out for lunch for, for, for taking care of them. That's a business deduction. When you go on a conference, you go visit a vendor of yours, you're traveling for a business, a hundred percent clearly business related item. That's a business deduction. So let's not forget about those different things. And so a lot of times I get these new business owners that are saying, Hey, is this a tax deduction? And so many times I see it and I'm like, of course, like there, there's no question asked. And so what are some of those things? Let's think about some of the obvious ones. Home office deduction. If you're buying software that you're using to to help run your business, if you're buying equipment, we I just had a conversation with someone that was starting a photography business, and they said, "Well, I'm buying a camera. I'm buying a microphone that can hook up to my camera because we're going to be doing some interviews and some videos and things like that." And I just want to make sure is this stuff deductible? Yes, of course. That camera you bought, that the microphone that you bought for that, the the software that you're using to edit all this, that's tax deductible. The website that you created for your business, that's tax deductible. The social media software they used to post it all over, that's tax deductible. So we don't want to forget about these obvious things when we talk about maximizing deductions. And that's one thing I want to drive home in this episode. When we talk about top small business tax deductions, let's first cover the obvious ones, the clear ones. And then let's dig into these little bit more in-depth strategies, this planning that we can do to truly maximize those tax deductions. So what are some of those obvious ones? Again, advertising items. If you have a a bank account that charges a monthly fee, that's a tax deduction. If you have credit card fees that are being charged, that's a tax deduction. Payroll, payments you're making to contractors, those are tax deductions. Software that you're using in your business, those are tax deductions. Meals that you're buying for clients and business meetings that you're having, those are tax deductions. Uh, Let's not forget about personal use of your automobile that you're traveling around and, and doing those things. That's a tax deduction. Your home office that you're operating out of, that's a tax deduction. Software that you're using. So those are things we, of course, want to be taking advantage of. And so I don't want to brush past that. But then let's talk about this concept of maximizing deductions. And again, I kind of talked about how this is one of my favorite topics to talk about. And I also want to mention that we have a complete guide about maximizing deductions, all different things of different types of deductions, different types of expenses, various kind of planning opportunities and things like that. So if you haven't downloaded that, free, it's free download. Go download that right now. Go to taxsavingspodcast.com forward slash deductions. That's taxsavingspodcast.com forward slash deductions and download that guide. But let's kind of start digging into it and and let's uncover kind of the basics. What is a business deduction or what, what, what do you need to qualify as a business deduction? And it's very simple. Basically, the IRS says that if an expense is ordinary and necessary, it's a valid business deduction. And so ordinary just means common and accepted in your industry. So, you know, if you're a photographer and you're buying camera equipment, that's ordinary and acceptable in your type of industry. Of course, you're going to meet that. The necessary thing means it's helpful and appropriate to help your business operate. It's helpful to get clients. It's helpful to retain clients. It's helpful and appropriate to complete your service or complete your product. It's helpful to uh, get employees. It's helpful to retain employees. Those are kind of the items. So when we look at a business expense, the requirements that the IRS says, it's got to be ordinary and necessary. Now, it doesn't have to mean that it's repeating. It could be a one-night, one-time, one-off thing. But as long as it's ordinary, common, and typical in your industry and the type of work that you're in, and it's necessary, it's helpful and appropriate to help your business operate and succeed, then it can be a valid 
business deduction. So once we can get past that, it's ordinary and necessary. Then we start to look into, okay, what are some of those items? Now, when we talk about this concept of maximizing deductions, I hear from way too many people where they talk to their accountant, they say, how can I save some taxes? And their accountant says, well, go buy a truck and we can take bonus depreciation. We can do all this depreciation on it and get a big deduction and, and, and reduce a bunch of your income. Or go out and buy a new computer that you don't need or a new piece of equipment that you don't need. So we could take all this depreciation and lower your income. And I want to try to encourage business owners that that's not the way that we have to do it to maximize the deductions. Now, if you need new equipment, if you need a new work vehicle, if you need a new truck for your business, of course, let's take advantage of that. Let's utilize the tax codes that are available to us and utilize that opportunity. But I don't want people going out and buying a truck that they don't need, going buying a piece of equipment that they don't need simply for a tax deduction. There are so many different ways that we talk about all the time on our podcast, on our YouTube channel, that we talk about on how we can lower your tax, but how we can save you on taxes without having to buy things that we don't need. And a lot of times this concept is core, the root idea of this concept is rooted in this idea of maximizing deductions. And so I want to talk about kind of the core idea of maximizing deductions. In order to do that, we want to talk about pre-tax versus after-tax spending. Pre-tax spending is what so many people are used to. That's your typical W-2 worker where you have gross wages, you have all these taxes taken out, and then you have your net pay, your take-home pay. And any spending that you do with that take-home pay is considered after-tax spending. So after-tax spending is what typically people think about when you think of as a W-2 earner. Again, gross wages, all these taxes taken out, and then you have your take-home pay. And that take-home pay is money that's already been taxed. So any spending that you do with that take-home pay is considered after-tax spending. Now let's flip the coin and look at pre-tax spending. As a business owner, we have our sales in our business or our revenue in our business. And then we have all these expenses that go into that, that reduce that sales or revenue number. And then we have our profit. And our profit is what we get taxed on in our business. Our profit is what we pay taxes on. So any spending that we do inside of the business is considered pre-tax spending because the spending that we're doing prior to that money being taxed, because again, we have sales or revenue, and then all those expenses are prior to that money being taxed, and then we have our profit, and then our money is being taxed. And so a core concept and core idea behind maximizing deductions is how can we turn typical after-tax spending and turn it into pre-tax spending? And I like to talk about give this as a kind of a real life example, I like to go through when COVID first hit. When COVID first hit, let's say you're a W-2 worker and you're typically working in an office. COVID hits, you get sent home and now you're working out of a home office. You're using utilities, you're pumping on the heat up, you're pumping the air conditioner up during the day, which you typically weren't doing, but now you're working from home. You're using more electricity, you're using more different things. You're working out of a dedicated home office. You maybe went out and bought a desk, maybe went out and bought a chair, maybe some, a new microphone, a new monitor, whatever it might be for your now home office. And as a W-2 worker, all that spending you did, you got no deduction for it. You used after-tax spending for all of those items. Now let's flip the switch. Let's look at it from a business owner standpoint. In that same case, that desk you bought, business deduction, that monitor you bought, business deduction. That chair you bought, that camera, that microphone, that everything you bought, business deduction. That home office that you're working out of, business deduction. And so that is the beauty behind we, in that scenario, just by becoming a business owner, we moved typical after-tax spending into pre-tax spending. And that's the beauty. That's the benefit that we have as business owners. And that's the concept, this core concept of maximizing deductions that we constantly want to be thinking about. How can we move after-tax spending into pre-tax spending? And so I like to look at different ideas. When we talk about, again, download our guide, go to taxsavingspodcast.com forward slash deductions. We have a free guide there. We talk about all different types of tax strategies, all different types of deductions on how to maximize deductions, some planning opportunities and various different things around that. So definitely go out and download that guide, taxsavingspodcast.com forward slash deductions. But let's talk about some of the concepts that we think about. Home office deduction. Let's talk about advertising. Let's talk about hiring your kids in your business. We so, And we have a podcast episode, a video on this as well. But we talk about this idea of hiring our kids in our business. 
typically we're we're supporting our kids in different ways. We're sending them to basketball camps. We're sending them to amusement parks with their friends. And we're typically going to use after-tax spending to fund that activities that we have our kids doing. But if we hire our kids in our business, now we can get a business deduction and our kids potentially pay no income taxes on that. And now that spending that they're going to do on that basketball camp, they could use those monies for it. And so now that basketball camp, we just turn from an after-tax spending into a pre-tax spending. And that's the concept where we start to really tax plan with this idea of maximizing deductions. We take this maximizing deductions concept and idea to a new level. And we say, okay, how can we kind of dig deeper? And that's what we focus a lot on our podcast is concepts like that. Now, of course, we want to make sure that we're doing all these correctly. Because when it comes to tax strategies, they have to be done legally. Because we can take a strategy that is completely legal, completely said, yes, this is in the IRS code, very black and white but we can turn it illegal by not implementing it correctly, by not documenting it correctly. The IRS could take deduction away from us by not having clear documentation for that. And so with any tax strategy we talk about, we want to learn about it. We want to understand what's available to us. And then we want to make sure we're implementing it correctly. This episode is brought to you by Taxum. At Taxum, we understand that saving taxes can be complex and overwhelming for business owners. That's why we're here to be that tax strategist in your back pocket, ensuring that you pay the least amount in taxes as legally possible. With TaxZone, you receive a tax savings blueprint tailored to your business needs, unlimited access to our team of tax experts, and an annual one-on-one live consultation. You'll also have access to our comprehensive training with videos, downloads, templates, workbooks, guides, and so much more, along with our monthly live trainings to keep you informed and in control. Thousands of business owners across the country trust TaxOm. It's time you did too. Visit us now and take that first step towards paying the least amount in taxes as legally possible. There has never been a better time to join TaxOm. Do not forget about our 30-day money-back guarantee. We guarantee that we will present tax saving strategies that will, at a minimum, cover the cost of your subscription fee or your money back. This is your risk-free invitation to explore the benefits of tax sale membership and how it can transform your approach to tax planning and savings. Go to taxelm.com. That is T-A-X-E-L-M.com. Now back to the show. And we talk about this concept of maximizing deductions. What are some of the ways that we can create that implementation correctly? Now, every strategy, if we look at hiring our kids, that's got its own little kind of a window of different things we need to make sure we're doing correctly. If we talk about home office, that's got its own little window of things that we're doing correctly. But we're just talking about this concept of how do I maximize deductions? How do I turn travel that I was going to do with my family into a deductible business expense? How do I take a meal that I day I go to lunch with a friend? How do I turn that into a deductible business expense? How do I take those items and move them from after-tax spending into pre-tax spending? And those are when we talk about documentation for that. It's all about keeping the receipt and writing on the receipt. Who, what, where, when, why. Put the details on there. You go out to lunch with a friend. Who did you meet to? Write their name on there. I met with Bob. I talked about advertising. I talked about how our business was doing. And he actually had a referral for me. And we talked about how that referral, how he's going to you know, introduce that referral to me. Gave me some information about that referral. Now, the IRS doesn't care if Bob's a friend of mine, if Bob's my uncle, if Bob's my cousin. The IRS doesn't care. They just want to know, why was that meal business related? And so when we talk about documentation for maximizing deduction, some of that everyday spending that you're doing, just simply write on the receipt. Who did you meet with? What, why, what is a, what did you do? What is the expense? If it's a meal, it's a meal. If it's buying something, it's buying something. Why is it business related? So my favorite thing to do is keep the receipts right on it. If it's a meal or something like that, someone involved who, otherwise, if it's just, I'm buying a new camera, what's the camera for? Cameras to record podcasts, the cameras to do whatever, right on the receipt, take a picture of it and save it in a digital file. That's how we create documentation. Now, more likely than not, you're never going to need those items. The IRS, you're never going to have the IRS ask you for that. But if they do, you don't have to worry because all you do, you go in your digital file, you take the receipts or invoices or whatever it is, submit it to the IRS and the IRS says, yep, that looks good. So that's how we create documentation. Another key thing that we want to do with with maximizing deductions is we want to have a separate business bank account and credit card. So we want to make sure that we're running all that business activity through a separate business bank account and credit card, separate from our personal 
Because what the IRS would see, if they start to see commingling, if they start seeing all these business related expenses mixed in with personal expenses on whatever account it is, they, we want to avoid that commingling piece because if the IRS sees that, they're going to really look into those expenses a lot deeper. If they see a personal expense right next to a business expense in the same bank account or on the same credit card, now they're going to be a little bit deeper. They're going to look into that business expense and say, hey, we need proof of that business expense. We're going to need some more details on that. So we want to make sure that we have a separate business bank account and credit card. And we also want to make sure that we're not commingling items, making sure that businesses ran on the business, personals ran on the personal. Now, obviously, there's times where you don't have your business card or you make a mistake or or sometimes items are business and personal mix. Think of things like a home office or maybe a personal use of an automobile. Then we're going to utilize something like an accountable plan to help us reimburse us for those items. And we have shows on that. So that's this concept of maximizing deductions. And so I just want to start back from the beginning just to kind of drive home this concept, this idea, the things that we want to be thinking about as a business owner. First off, definitely download our free guide, our ultimate list of business deductions. Go to taxsavingspodcast.com forward slash deductions. Download that, read through it once, then go back a couple days later, read through it again and put it on your desk. Make sure it's something you read every maybe one month, maybe every two months, maybe twice a year, you're going to read this guide because it's going to invigorate ideas into your mind of being like, oh, here's an opportunity for a business deduction. Oh, I can go do this. So download that guide. Again, taxsavingspodcast.com forward slash deductions. The next thing I want to talk about that we talked about today is this idea of obvious business related items. I think so many times business owners or oftentimes business owners start to go down this rabbit hole of tax strategies, tax savings, and they forget about those obvious ones. Those questions of, hey, I'm using this software to edit videos for my photography business. Is that a business deduction? Absolutely. It is 100% business. There is no question there on what you're using that editing software for. Take that deduction. Make sure you're, you're utilizing those obvious ones. If it's business related, run it through the business. Again, let's keep receipts. Let's write on the receipts. But let's not forget about those obvious ones. When we talk about what qualifies as a business deduction, we say it's got to be ordinary and necessary. Ordinary means just common and accepted in your industry. And necessary means that's helpful and appropriate for your business to succeed, for your business to retain clients, for your business to get clients, for your business to get employees, retain employees. A business expense or be a valid business expense has to be both ordinary and and necessary. Again, fairly easy concept to to grasp. The next piece is this pre-tax versus after-tax spending. And this is when we go down that rabbit hole a little bit further of saying, okay, how can we utilize the tax code that's available to us as business owners and maximize it to our advantage? The IRS gives us a gift of this idea of after-tax versus pre-tax spending. It is our responsibility to learn it and implement it. And so this gift, again, is that business owners, if you're a W-2 earner, any spending that you do ever is using money that's already been taxed. And so that's considered after-tax spending. But as a business owner, you have your sales or revenue, and any spending that you do within the business is all spending that's being done prior to that money being taxed. Because remember, as a business owner, you're taxed on the profit of your business. So any spending that you do prior to that profit, that bottom line number, is considered pre-tax spending. And so our goal and concept as a business owner would be how can we move after-tax spending, spending that we're already going to do anyways, into pre-tax spending. Think of things like a home office. Think of things like personal use of an automobile. Think of things like hiring our kids. Think of things like how can I take a travel, a family vacation I'm going to take anyways, and make it business deduction. How can I find a conference, a rental property, a client, a vendor in this location that we're going to, and at least taking a portion of that, biz- of that travel as a business expense? How can I revisit meals and look at meals that I'm doing anyways, but finding a business purpose for them and making sure I support it, document it, back it up? That's this idea of moving after-tax spending into pre-tax spending. Again, we don't want to look at, say, hey, go buy a truck that you don't need. Go buy a new TV that you don't need. Go buy this new piece of equipment that you don't need. That's not the concept that we're talking about. We're saying, let's look at this spending you're already doing and how can we find a business purpose for it and move it from after-tax spending into pre-tax spending. One kind of strategy or idea that I like to encourage business owners to do is go through your personal account, your personal bank account, your personal credit card, and look at your spending and think of the and go through those and 
See if there's any way that you can find business purpose to some of that spending. That's a good process to start being like, oh yeah, I had lunch with my friend Jason and I actually got a referral out of it. I had lunch with my friend Betty and Betty talked about, we talked about, hey, this hiring struggle I was going through. And I had lunch with my, my friend Chelsea and she talked about how this concept of this new ad campaign that she did in her business. Now, these are all friends. These are all family members, but that doesn't mean that it can't be a business deduction because that's what you talked about. That's what you're doing. Again, we want to support this. We want to back this up. Keep all of your receipts. Now, there's certain dollar limits, things like that. I say, just keep every receipt and write on the receipt. Who, what, where, when, why? Why is it a business expense? We don't need a full paragraph detail. Met with Bob and discussed advertising campaigns and he sent in a referral my way. Boom. Save that receipt. Take a picture of it. Save it digitally. The IRS isn't going to challenge that if that's what you talked about. And then we also like this idea of having a separate business bank account and credit card that has clear definition. It makes bookkeeping a lot easier. It helps make everything more clean. But also by having that separate business bank account and credit card, we also want to avoid any commingling. Make sure you're not running personal expenses on that business account and make sure you're not running business expenses on your personal account. And if you happen to make that mistake, utilize an accountable plan to reimburse yourself. If you pay for something business related on your personal account, just reimburse yourself for it. Now, you're going to have concept and things that we're going to utilize an accountable plan for. And these are things like the home office, personal use of an automobile, where we're going to pay for those things personally, but they have a partial business purpose. That's where we're going to, again, use an accountable plan to reimburse ourselves for that. So my goal here is to, again, drive home this concept of after-tax versus pre-tax spending. How can we take spending that you're already doing, find a business purpose for it, and move it from after-tax spending into pre-tax spending. That's this concept of maximizing deductions. This is the root to a lot of the tax strategies that we talk about. Again, hiring our kids, travel, meals, electronics that we buy, advertising, charitable contributions. This concept, after-tax versus pre-tax spending, is the root to a lot of that. And I want to encourage you to check out our guide, our ultimate list of business deductions where we talk through, we give you examples, we go through various different expense line items that can help you along this journey. Continue to revisit that guide throughout the year. Now we're kind of midway, we're getting to the midway point of the year. Let's start thinking about this. If you have to go back and change some things that you did in the past and make some reimbursements for that, let's do that now. But let's make this the starting point that here moving forward, we're going to do things the right way. We're going to have that separation of bank accounts. We're going to have that separation, no commingling. We're going to be keeping our receipts and we're going to constantly be thinking about this idea of after-tax spending. If I'm swiping my card, is there a business purpose for this expense? If so, let's document it, let's put it on record, and let's take it through the business. And finally, do not forget about those obvious business deductions. Now, when we talk about going to lunch with a friend and you're talking business at that lunch, that is a business deduction, but sometimes that's not real obvious. Now, you're taking a client, a client, a vendor out to lunch that you never, you're not friends with, it's just a vendor, they're in town, you're like, I'm going to suit treat them for lunch. That's an obvious business deduction. Let's make sure we're taking advantage of the obvious ones. You're buying software for your business. You're buying new equipment. You're buying these things. Make sure we're taking advantage of those obvious ones as well. So hopefully this was helpful. Again, this is a concept that is the root understanding that we need you to understand as we lead into all sorts of different planning opportunities. And that's why I wanted to do this episode now. So I want to thank you for listening to another episode. Again, do not forget to download our guide, taxsavingspodcast.com forward slash deductions. And we're going to continue this discussion of various different ideas and different topics throughout the year on how you can pay the least amount of taxes as legally possible. I will see you next week. This has been another episode of the Small Business Tax Savings Podcast. If you enjoy our weekly episodes, please leave a review and share with other business owners. You can find previous episodes and more information at www.taxsavingspodcast.com. Thanks for listening and have a great day.